Hi there, um, this is Balsamic Moon Tarot returning to give you another reading and today I'm calling this reading uh, Your Heart's Desire. What is the advice for um, living a path to joy and illumination? I have three objects here for you to choose. Um, Pick which, which one resonates with you at this time to receive your reading. And then feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp for the reading. So we have here a cone shell. Seashell there. We have gold earrings. And we have a glass swan here, crystal swan, very pretty, okay, so pick your object and skip ahead to your reading, see you in a moment. Hello pile number one, you chose this cone seashell. Uh, with beautiful speckled abstract pattern for your reading. I am now going to tell, pull your cards. I'm going to flip your cards and I'm going to tell you your heart's desire. I have a, a, a pile of more tarot cards here to continue the reading. So first we'll start with these, with, um, these three cards. And just so you know, I do not read reversals. We have the world. Wonderful. Very cool. So pretty. We have, wow, the lovers. Look at that. This is gorgeous. We have, uh, from the visionary I Ching, we have hexagram number 18. Repairing the damage, mountain above, wind below. Okay, super interesting. I'm just going to pause this real quick so that I can read this description for that hexagram. Pile number one. Okay, I have read the description for this hexagram. And I also looked up for this particular deck, the Tarot of Cosmic Consciousness, I looked up the Lover's Card. Um, already I'm getting such a beautiful message here about your heart's desire and advice for pursuing your heart's desire, for pursuing a path of joy and illumination. Okay, so here are your additional cards. We have the Nine of Pentacles. Let me just scooch things a bit. We have the Three of Pentacles. We have the King of Pentacles. Wow, so many Pentacles. We have the Judgment card. And we have, lovely, we have the Ace of Cups. Beautiful. Sorry if the lighting is weird. I'm still getting the hang of this uh, type of video. <laughs> um, okay, let me just balance things out on the screen here. Okay, pile number one. <clears throat> for your heart's desire and for your, the advice for, for achieving your heart's desire, pursuing your heart's desire. 
wow, what I am seeing here is a need to be in the world, to exist in the world um, as your truest self, your most authentic self. With the world card here, I am seeing that you are, you have achieved something in your life, perhaps professionally, um, perhaps even gaining status, gaining recognition for work you have done. This could even be, if not professionally, it could be um, success in the family life, perhaps like um, you are a parent, um, maybe even purchased a home. There's like a strong sense here of um, real world success, right? Um, something that is associated with status or money or achievement and, and, and a really great feeling of that sense of I've arrived, right? I've achieved. Um, with the lover's card and repairing the damage, what I am seeing is that in order to attain this level of success, you did have to compromise something and now you are feeling the effects of that compromise. So it's a bit bittersweet here to have attained this, um, this level of success because I do feel that you are also experiencing um, some kind of, I don't even want to say psychic pain that you know is connected to, to this um, aspect of your life. So for example, it could be a relationship. It could be that perhaps you and your partner, if you're, let's say you're married and you and your partner saved all this money to buy a house and you feel the achievement of, of being homeowners, you're, it's a very um, satisfying and, you know, wonderful moment for you to have done this, to finally reach that goal, right? You work so hard. I think that you are experiencing, I mean, this is one example, but then to do that and then to to realize like, okay, now that the focus is off that because we've achieved it, you're realizing that you both work so hard working overtime or, you know, taking, yeah, taking on extra jobs that you didn't have time, much time for each other, much time for the relationship. And so the relationship itself, the, 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 fulf the fulfilling, joyful aspects of that relationship are now in need of repair okay so so a need for intimacy or a need for closeness for the bond to be repaired and that is showing up this is one example let's say um in another example let's say you're not in a relationship this could be um you you know you have a you have a degree and after college you pursued a career path related to that degree and you finally um got a really well-paying job um and so you work so hard for many years to get to this well-paying job where you can live comfortably, you can pay off that student loan debt perhaps. And with this lover's card and repairing the damage, you're now seeing like, you're now sensing like, oh, you know, maybe this isn't what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, maybe I, you're sort of questioning like, what's the next chapter? Like, can I, do I have to like stay in this job just because of the money or can I pursue something that's more meaningful to me? you know, that, that maybe will mean less money for me, right? Like making that choice for a more meaningful life <clears throat> that won't be as lucrative. And so repairing the damage in this case is about repairing that relationship to yourself, re repairing that inner, um, the, the, the inner joy, the inner richness of life that you experience when you're inspired. And, and, you know, maybe you're just feeling less inspired these days because you've been so focused on the financial incentives, right? So these are just examples. What your heart's desire to, to sum it up, what your heart's desire is about this, um, this integrity, this, um, integrity of living a life that is uh, sustainable, stable, successful, um, you know, having your responsibilities and obligations met, but at the same time, what you are doing in this, in this mundane, in the mundane sense, what you're doing in the daily activities is aligned with your greatest spiritual goals, with your greatest, most meaningful, with, with what is truly meaningful to you. So that alignment is your heart's desire. That type of integrity, um, is your heart's desire. So in the case of relationships, it's having a relationship that 
feels as good as it appears, right? In the case of a career, it's having a career that feels as good as it appears on paper, right? In other words, the world of appearances is meaningless to you or is, is about to become meaningless to you. And, and what people think about you is, 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 is about to become meaningless to you or just less, less important to you because you're searching for that, um, for living out that truth, right? Living out your most authentic, um, life and, and an expression of your essential self, your essential joy. That is what I'm seeing for you is your heart's desire. But what do we see for advice? How can you achieve this? How can you get closer to this goal of attaining your heart's desire? And in the beginning of this video, I used the words joy and illumination because I feel that we never, um, we never have a moment for life never stays still, right? We're always in motion. So for me, my idea of attaining our heart's desire is being on the path and being on the path towards joy and illumination, joy and truth, the truth of your, you know, your, the truth of your soul experiencing this life, this momentary life, and the, the joy of your soul experiencing this life. So those are the keywords I'm using because that's the intention I'm setting when I mean your heart's desire, I really mean your heart's desire at the, at the most soulful, deepest level, okay? So, what we see here, in addition to these top three cards, we see nine of pentacles, three of pentacles, king of pentacles, judgment, and ace of cups. So, <clears throat> well, um... What this is telling me, it's very much, to me, this is very much work-related. Um, let's say you're not employed, though. It is about your, you know, what, what it is in your life that is, that is allowing you to live, right? So the real, um, the sustenance in your life. So, for example, if you don't work, are you relying on a partner or are you relying on a family member or are you even relying on an institution like a grant, right, for for your um, income, that sort of thing? I think that this advice is about unearthing these ties, on you know, really examining, bringing these these aspects of your life into, uh, bringing it to your scrutiny, opening it up, being open about it, being very. Um, seeking, you know, being revel revelatory, uh, what I'm trying to say is like, put everything out in the, in the open here, and, and this doesn't mean like you have to tell other people, what I'm saying is that for yourself, you need a moment of judgment, you need a moment of evaluation, evaluate in your life how money functions, uh, how resources flow, because with the Nine of Pentacles, there is, it is indicating someone who has a certain amount of comfort here and who can live quite a luxurious life. And then with the Three of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles, this is pointing to a partnership. This is pointing to some kind of, you know, forged connection, solidarity, partnership, collaboration. So I do see that your comforts in life are supported or funded by something bigger than you right so again that could mean the high paying job it could mean an institution like if you are getting grants or charity or uh even welfare right like the government it could mean um a, a family member or a partner it could mean like a parent or it could mean like a a partner who makes really good money or has their own wealth so i think that if you were to examine this aspect of your life where are you you know, who, how do you pay the bills? Where is that coming from? What does that require of you? It's, it's bringing a question to you where it's like, does, where the question is, does this resonate with you? Does this, is this meaningful to you? Is this, uh, aligning with your values? I think if you start a path of inquiry there, you'll then strengthen your, your, your personal integrity and you'll strengthen your own commitment, resolve, and dedication to your goals. So for here, I'll give you two examples of how this could play out. Let's say you are someone who is living quite comfortably because you received a grant, and that grant allows you to 
you know, pay your rent, pay, pay, pay the rent of, a, of an, an apartment in a great part of the city. And you, um, you know, you're grateful for this grant, but now you're going to just, again, like bring it up for evaluation. And you realize that, you know, one of the, one of the things about this grant is that it does take up a lot of your personal time because you're constantly networking and you're constantly in communication with the people who funded this grant. They want a lot of your personal time. They want a lot of your opinions, your attention. And so you're going to examine this in light of your heart's desire. Is this draining me emotionally or is it filling my cup, right? Is it draining my cup or is it filling my cup? Because if it is draining, then you can question, you know, is this grant worth it, right? Is the money I received or this charity or this donation, is it really worth what it is uh, requiring of my day-to-day -day life? That's just one example for the advice that I'm giving. Another advice could be, um, you know, it could be that you don't have to work because you have a family member uh, you have inheritance, right? You have um, fam familial wealth, intergenerational wealth. Um, and so that means you don't have to work. Now, put, you know, to have a moment of judgment and really evaluate this for yourself, evaluate this in terms of your own value. <laughs> I'm sorry, so I'm saying so many words, right? To really look at this in light of your value system, your, your most cherished values, does it mean then that you should continue down this path? Does it mean that you should continue to um, let the resources, the privilege that you have define a lot of your daily activities? You know, do you need to step out on your own for a bit? Do you even need to like maybe try a period of time where you don't rely on that support system. Now, pentacles can mean wealth, but it can mean other things. It can mean, you know, it means um, stability. So these, these, these structures that can be stabilizing in your life, but they can also be burdensome or, can, or restricting in your life. So family obligations are definitely, I see them as pentacles matters. Family obligations, responsibilities, you know, perhaps your family wealth allows you to live a life of luxury, but it also means that you are constantly feeling um, like you have to, um, you know, give give in return, like participate somehow in a family-oriented um, project. And maybe, you know, you're questioning if your own unique skills, are they truly going to grow here? Or are you always going to be sort of held back by the family dynamic, the family expectations, okay? So that's another example of how this might play out for you. I hope this resonates with you. If it does, please click the like button. Please um, subscribe to my channel for more readings like this. Um, I'm just going to actually, when I was shuffling, I did get a strong feeling from this deck. So I'm actually going to shuffle here and see what other cards I can get clarifying cards, uh, cards of advice, or um, potential outcome here. Let's see, what is additional messages for pile number one? Oh, okay, this one. So let's do three. We have the devil. We have the ten of swords. Wow, we have the Nine of Cups. So you see here, there is something so deep. There's a self-limiting belief. There's some kind of maybe even subconscious belief, a negative belief that you are done. You are done with it. You're going to retire that belief or that idea of, of how limited you are. And, you, and you're going to put it behind. You're going to put it to rest. Because you're worth having, meeting your heart's desire. You're worth having a fulfilling, happy, content life. Now, in the world of relationships, this could mean that your relationship needs to be examined, your dynamic needs to be examined, and you need to end certain behaviors or end certain um, expectations. You know, this is an ending here with this Ten of Swords. This is about putting something to rest 
and not pursuing that anymore. But by doing that, by letting go, by releasing an unhealthy or a toxic trait, uh, relate a toxic trait or a toxic relationship or a toxic um, behavior or a toxic thought, right? Like a like a belief. By doing that, you finally can achieve the pinnacle of your fulfillment of your happiness. This is your heart's desire. This is you, you finally being content and very. Um, happy with yourself, fulfilled with yourself, fulfilled, knowing you did your best, knowing you, you've you pursued um, the path, you, your destiny, you know, feeling that fulfillment, uh, this is the fulfillment of, of one's destiny. So best wishes for you, pile number one. I think that there are so many beautiful things opening up for you as you kind of uh, establish a, your your identity, your 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 essential self, your authentic self, as you really hone and and uh, assert it, right? Assert it. Um, I think that your heart's desire, your joy, and uh, all the brightness in your life is going to just shine even more. So, best of luck to you. Thank you for uh, being here. And um, I'll see you next time, pile number one. Hello, pile number two. You selected these earrings um, as the object that resonated with you at this time. So now we will see what that means for you in terms of your heart's desire. Um, what is your heart's desire? How can you pursue it? What is your path to that joyful illumination? That's also how I want to phrase that. And the intention I'm setting for this reading. Just so you know, I do not read reversals. Okay, let's see what we have so far. We have the Eight of Swords. And this woman is... It looks like this woman is... Has been uh, unlocked here. She was in a box. This man has just opened this box. Almost like a coffin. But it looks like more like a secret... Um, some kind of secret hiding place. And now... With that candle, she is leaving that dark box and she is entering. Um, she's being released and she's looking around her, seeing what is around her as lit by that candle. And now we have the Eight of Cups. Okay. And we have Easy Progress. It's so interesting. This card keeps coming up for me since getting this deck. Wow, this feels so good, I have to say. I'm really, um, really excited for you, and I'm curious what your other cards say. So let's go ahead. I have another pile here of additional cards I've shuffled. Justice. Page of Pentacles. Wow. Very cool to have this combination here. The Tower. The Hierophant. <clears throat> wow. Powerful theme showing up here. I'm seeing a lot of, um, I'm getting a sense of taking one's power and, rec you know, claiming one's own authority. There you go, the sun, gorgeous. So this deck, I actually had three cards that came out, so I'm going to, to show them all here. Ooh, lovely. I have the six of wands and I have the queen of swords as well. Sorry if this is having trouble focusing. Okay, so let me put these, let me scoot this over here. <clears throat> and I'll put these here. Okay, great. Pile number two. Um, first of all, I am seeing 
a synchronicity here with these earrings, the page of pentacles, the pentacle there, the sun, the gold of the sun. Even with the six of wands here, we see how this uh, victory, the wand holding this wreath, right, of, the, of victory is, is showing up there as well. <clears throat> we also have with the eight of cups in this deck, we have it as um, shaped as a circle here. Okay, I'm just going to pause for a minute, moment. Um, I do want to read the description from this particular deck about that eight of cups. I'll be right back. Okay, pile number two. Wow, I'm getting a very interesting message here. With regards to your heart's desire, I feel that you know there is something, there's something within you, there's something, there's a talent or there is a unique trait within you that just needs more development. And you can feel it intuitively, intuitively you feel that if this talent or if this secret skill was more developed, you know, it, it, it could lead to astonishing success for you and so much joy and fulfillment in your life. I think that your heart's desire is um, to, to be in the environment or to identify the environment or the scenario or the challenge that could truly hone this um, undeveloped side of you. And I think that you are very close to identifying this um, path. So it could be a program, right? It could be an educational program. It could be uh, an institution that offers a particular degree. And, it, you know, just even thinking about this degree or thinking about the program, it, it just lights you up. It really lights you up from inside and makes you um, so thrilled at the prospect of maybe one day um, having that career or having that role because it, it resonates so strongly with you as an individual. Um, but your heart's desire, I really see that you want to release, you want to let go of um, some previous situation that it could have been useful for a time, but it is no longer useful to you. It is no longer serving you. And I think just now, just for the first time, you are finally feeling ready. It's like, it's like up until this moment, you kept rationalizing to yourself why that would never work, why you cannot leave it, why you have to stick around. So this could be a job. This could be even living somewhere. You know, maybe you're living in a certain city or maybe you're living with your parents or you're, you know, there's, there's a situation that you just, um, kept talking yourself into returning to over and over again. But with this eight of cups and easy progress, emotionally, you finally feel ready. Emotionally, you feel like I'm done. This is it. I can move on. And what that will release for you is tremendous. The tower card, there's a bit of trepidation here. You are somewhat afraid that this, that to leave, that to move on is going to create changes that are a bit terrifying, I would say. But I think, it, you know, you, you are a bit terrified at what it would all mean to leave behind this old um, life and embark on this new role, this new life, this new goal, this new path, a new path of learning or apprenticeship here. You know, this could be a big career change. Maybe you are like finally leaving behind a career that you've outgrown. Um, but with the justice card right here, I mean, so many, you know, the justice, the hierophant, the sun, the queen of swords, right? The six of wands. So this overall message is pointing to the clarity you have at this moment. Your heart's desire is to... Um, Your heart's desire is to make a choice that that structures your life in a way. Uh, uh, so, for example, to choose to go back to school or to choose to apply for 
uh, enter a competition where you are going to be eva uh, evaluated or judged based on your merit, right? So, so this is a this is about making a decision to be tested, to be challenged, to be taught. Making a decision to go into a practice where you're going to learn so much. Your heart's desire is to enter the big time. You know, your heart's desire is to be uh, surrounded by people who um, have the experience, the knowledge, the expertise, and the wisdom to find the mentor or to find the situation where you are being mentored, okay? That is your heart's desire. Um, I think that, I'm, I'm hearing this, you want to be part of the winner's circle. I'm even hearing that. You know what it is? It's like you have... You're realizing that you're worth, you're worth the effort. You are worth someone seeing the potential in you and investing in you because you know you have a, a talent. You just know this. You know this from the bottom of your heart. We even see it with these earrings. We see how, you know, gold, right? Gold is so pure. There's the pure uh just a pure talent that you have. There's something you bring to the table that is so pure, so unique and original. And all you need is the right support system or the right structure, the right environment to develop um, this uh, uniqueness of yours, this, this unique contribution of yours. I am seeing with the justice card, there is potential here that you do want to pursue a field in law. Maybe you want to go to law school. That's a very specific message. Because with the Hierophant, we definitely get, you know, um, this definitely points to um, an institution, institutional authority. Um, but even like the pinnacle, right? The pinnacle of authority in our society. Um, the highest that one can achieve, right? So I do see this as even, you know, maybe if you're not changing careers, you're in a career and you're realizing, why am I going to sell myself short? Why am I going to stay in a situation where I'm never going to be promoted because I don't have the right credential? If I just invest in myself, if I just invest in my education or invest my time in, in developing this skill, then I can, you know, then the tables are turned. Then I am the expert. I am the authority. People will come to me for 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 my service, right? Um, you'll have that recognition. You will have that validation, the success as well, the um, the honors that are associated with this particular credential or degree or or award. You know, again, I'm also seeing like you could even be entering a competition. You've known all along that you have it in you, but if you enter this particular competition, you will be tested. And so you you believe that you will succeed based on your talent and your merit. You're ready to put in the time. You're ready to be disciplined. With the tower moment here, you're ready for the change. You're ready to have your life sort of turned upside down because you are making a choice that is so important to you. You're willing to move on and get rid of the baggage, get rid of even old contacts or naysayers or, or um, uh, relationships, obligations or uh, responsibilities that have just kept you down, just kept you held back. And now you're just like, no, there's something more important to me and I'm worth pursuing it. I am, I am important enough to achieve the highest level of success in this field, okay? So that is awesome. <laughs> I love that for you. Um, I think, you know, even in terms of advice, I feel like there's really not much advice here because I, I sense that you, you've, you've, you know, so strongly you're ready to, to, um, take these next steps to, to, you're ready to, um, throw your hat in the ring. You know, I do feel that you don't, need much advice right now you just need the affirmation that this is that what you're sensing what you're intuiting is correct here this is definitely a, a pivotal moment for you i see that if there's any advice 
it would be to put in enough time to put in your due diligence for researching um, the uh, authority figures or the institutions, you know, researching the, the, the systems or the people around you who claim any power, who seem, who are asserting any power or authority. So, you know, perhaps like you're applying for a, a program and they're saying that, you know, this, you know, obviously they want to market themselves and say that they're the best degree out there, that they're the best program out there for these reasons. Just do your research with the justice card. You know, you have the sense, the enough sense to um, look into the facts and figures, look into the cost, look into the maybe the uh, money you would have to borrow. Um, but, you know, look at this. We have, you've got the sun and you've got the queen of swords and the six of wands. Like, you have, the, you know, you've, you're going to do just fine. Um, you have all your powers of reason and intelligence and analysis working in your favor. Your mind, your brilliance is, um, is just definitely coming through right now. So continue to, um, you know, stay grounded, stay balanced, have a balanced uh, viewpoint here for sure. But, um, be very encouraged here. Your, you know, your message is that this path you have been thinking about, it is, it is, exactly as you um, envision, you know, your potential, your potential for success is exactly as you've been intuiting. Um, so I wish the best for you, pile number two. This is so exciting. I, um, you know, definitely um, uh, like or subscribe if this resonates for you. Um, I'm so curious of if, you know, what what this could be um, specifically for you. Okay, take care, uh, pile number two. Um, good luck and congratulations on getting to this wonderful moment where you can finally um, move forward and go towards this uh, very exciting um, um, new phase for you, okay? Bye now. Hello, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You have selected this very pretty glass swan figurine. So cool. Love this. Um, and today's reading is your heart's desire, um, advice for pursuing a path to joy and illumination. And that is my intention for this reading because I think the word path is important. We, um, life is never just, life does not stay still. We don't live in a photograph. We lived in a dynamic, um, constant relationship with the universe, right? Life is always in movement. Hi again, pile number three. I'm sorry for the interruption. <laughs> I gave you a reading and then I realized it wasn't recording or something happened to my camera and it stopped recording. So... <laughs> I have your cards turned over here and I am going to repeat what I'm, I'm going to give you a reading and show you the additional cards that I pulled as well. Um, but yeah, very interesting. So we have for you, um, with regards to your heart's desire, we have the Knight of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Wands. And we have clinging like fire, hexagram number 33. I'm sorry, hexagram number 30 from the Visionary I Ching Oracle. It says fire above, fire below. So incredible fiery energy. Um, okay, pile number three. Lots of wonderful information here. Um, the additional cards I pulled are the devil, the emperor,
And then from this deck, I pulled three cards. Three cards wanted to show up. We have Judgment, Ten of Wands, and Four of Pentacles. Wow. Let me stack these. We also have the Magician, amazing, I love that card, and I have the Eight of Cups here for you as the last card that was pulled. So your heart's desire, so much going on here. Um, what I've, what I've gotten, the message I've gotten about this is that Oh, I also want to, to just give another close-up here of this swan, which is a great, what a lovely object here, this glass swan. So, your heart's desire, pile number three, and your advice for pursuing this path, pursuing your heart's desire, pursuing a path to joy and illumination, is how I phrase it. Um, your heart's desire is to regain, to return to this very, motivated fiery visionary energy here and you had embarked on something as a result because you had this vision because you had this energy you see there's the alarm <laughs> you know you were so you were so excited there was something just calling you to this um whatever this goal is you're working on but you're now in the middle of it with this Knight of Pentacles, we see, you know, we see someone here um, on an ascent, on a rocky path. And so you have the grit and determination and perseverance to, to pursue what you're doing, to accomplish your goal here. Um, it is a long-term goal. It is something that is not immediate. You don't get immediate gratification from it. You get delayed gratification from it. But you feel so strongly about it that that is why you pursued it. And so the heart's desire with the Seven of Wands is to, to get that boost again, to get that energized feeling that you had at the beginning. It's not that you're feeling exhausted necessarily. It's not that you're feeling burnt out necessarily. I think you're just sensing that... Okay, pile number three. So sorry for the second interruption. Um, I realized what happened is my phone ran out of space, so I made up space to take this video. Um, we should be fine for the <laughs> remainder of this reading. I really apologize. So, as I was saying, it's not necessarily that you're feeling burnt out. You're, you're actually just feeling more excitement. You're feeling the excitement grow again because you are starting to see results of your work. And the, um, you know, this is, this is success that is um, really... Um, encouraging you, you know, and validating you that what you're doing, you're on the right path, you're doing things correctly, you're doing things as they should be, and you are on a very um, strong path to success here. Now, the additional cards that were pulled are, are giving me more of the backstory here, and I think this is why it's so important that your heart's desire is uh, discussed, because you, um, what I've gotten here is that you're someone who has overcome a tremendous challenge, perhaps early in life. Um, I do get the sense that you had to really take control over a matter. Perhaps you had to leave um, a community of origin, right? Maybe you had to leave your childhood home or you had to separate yourself from family, from parents. And just, it's like an emancipated adult is showing up here. Someone who took on a tremendous responsibility um, as a young person or, or, or before they were ready, like... Like you, you went and you did it because you just knew it was the right thing to do. And, um, and I'm getting that sense from, from this whole spread here, right? So with the judgment card, um, the Ten of Wands, the Four of Pentacles, like this is just how much you um, worked so hard to get to where you are. You had to protect yourself. You had to um, have boundaries up. You had to assert your boundaries. Um, you had to work hard when no one else was helping you. Um, and now with this judgment card, it's like all of that, all of those results, all of that is proven clear as day, right? Like you proved yourself in a very big way. You proved your ability to um, 
take charge of your life and to um, to be successful. Now, this could even mean, if maybe it's not necessarily a family situation, but maybe there was someone in your past that was still uh, domineering, oppressive, or a very negative, very cynical, very toxic. Maybe it was a person, maybe it was a, commu a situation, right? Maybe it was a group of people, maybe it was a work environment, maybe it was a school environment. Okay, so you get the gist of what I'm saying here. You did what you had to do and you left it, you overcame it. And that's so tremendous. I am really um, impressed by what you had to do to get to where you are today. You know, it could have been oppressive conditions. It could have been um, leaving, you know, maybe you're, you're an immigrant. Maybe you had to, um, maybe you're a migrant. Maybe you had to leave a, an, an oppressive government, right? Um, but with the magician here, like you believed in yourself so strongly and you felt right. You, you knew what you were doing was right. You were um, acting for what's right. And with the Eight of Cups, you know, you, um, you made that decision to leave behind, leave behind something that was just never going to um, improve, you know, for you. You realized that. You had the realization. And maybe you had this realization quite early on in life because I, I do just get the sense that you're someone who exhibited tremendous um, power, courage, potential from, from a young age or from, from some kind of early beginning, right? So for the, for the heart's desire, I am seeing for you this excitement and this, this desire to really get, have this joyful experience of life and living in the moment. I think that it's important for you um, in this moment in your life to, to just let go of these memories that you associate to, your, to the earlier part of your life. To let go of these, um, this, this sort of this story. Even though it is a story of success, it's a story of overcoming tremendous hardship. There's a new phase opening up for you, a new source, a new phase of happiness and brightness and liveliness. And it means being able to be like a child again, being able to be carefree again. It means letting go of these, these memories, these narratives. It's not that you're in denial. It's not that you have to be ignorant. It's just like recognizing that true liberation from them is for, is for that energy to not even exist in your life anymore, right? So it's like, uh, here's an example I gave before I realized the camera wasn't recording. Let's say you're planning a Christmas, uh, a holiday party or a New Year's party. And you have, you know, you, you, you've got the money, you can get, you've got the money to host a great party for your friends and family and your loved ones. And, um, you're thinking about who you're going to invite to the party and you don't want anyone who has been a naysayer. You don't want anyone who was, who's, uh, oppressive or abusive, right? You don't want any of your previous abusers or tormentors to be there. You don't want any connection to them at all. So of course you're not going to invite them, but you have the party and their absence means something. You know, maybe people ask, oh, where's so-and-so? So in a way, they're still there, right? Their energy is still there. And your heart's desire is to just have that party and no one talks about it because they're just, they're, they're just not even on anyone's mind. They're not on anyone's radar. You feel liberated from them finally. You feel liberated from their energy finally, right? You feel free to truly move on and live your life finally. That's the kind of fiery energy I'm getting from this seven of wands and this hexagram here and this magician. This is about um, taking control over your, uh, your joy, you know, like you're not going to let a sh any shadow, anyone's shadow, um, anyone's darkness cast a shadow over the joy that you work so hard to experience in your life. 
you're not going to let anyone, you know, it could be a guilty conscience. That's not, you don't, no, you don't deserve that. You don't need that. You don't need someone trying to make you feel guilty for what you had to do to get to this position in life. You know, maybe it's people who are like, oh, you have so much money. Like you have too much money. It's like, no, you worked hard for the money. You deserve it. You're not going to let them uh, guilt you into thinking you don't deserve um, what this money can do for you. That's the kind of attitude, that's the kind of energy I'm getting here for your heart's desire. And, and so this message is really about, it's an affirmation that, you know, you are someone of integrity. You have someone, you are someone who has, who has so much to, um, so much perseverance and, um, dedication and loyalty that, um, that you deserve to have fun, right? Like, you work so hard, you deserve to have fun. You deserve to have people in your life who bring that out in you, who bring out the joyful side, who, ha who share your sense of humor, right? You deserve to have that kind of fun and frivolity in your life and not just constantly be focused on working hard or defending yourself against the next threat, okay? So, advice I'm seeing... I mean, I think I said it. I think I think the advice is just like it's okay to move on. It's okay. It's okay. You do not need the memory of a painful past in order to be safe. You can let even you can even let go of the memory. You don't have to hold on to that memory. You don't have to have an emotional attachment to the past. Even the, 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 the story of how you overcame it, you don't have to have that be an essential part of your life now. You know, perhaps people, when you introduce yourself to people and you tell people your life story, perhaps their reaction is like, wow, that is, you know, they're awed, they're impressed. And, and that's what they see of you. That's their first impression. It makes such a strong first impression. Perhaps you can put that behind you where... When you, t when you meet people and you talk about yourself, maybe you don't have to talk about what you overcame. Maybe that doesn't have to be the, um, doesn't have to be the tenor of their, of their, you know, the, you know, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, maybe you can share it with them about yourself, like an artistic pursuit or, or your, you know, the, the, your sense of humor or, you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't have to all be about this uh, very, um, you know, this, this powerful story of your life, it can be, it's heavy, right? It's like, it doesn't have to be this heavy aspect of your life. It doesn't have to be present in all aspects of your life. You can make the choice when you want that aspect of yourself to be acknowledged, recognized, um, etc., uh, you don't have to have it be acknowledged all the time in order to feel like you've overcome it. Liberation, that liberated feeling is about having the choice to either let it go or hold on to it. Let it go or hold on to it, you know? So I think there, I think it's quite a, a layered message here. And I think, you know, you're not going to get the full picture from this reading. This is just an initiation this is a, a spark that I'm trying to put in, in your mind and in, in your heart that you can pay attention to what is good in your life. You don't have to pay attention to what has been bad in your life. There's still much joy in your life to come. And you will reach a point where you don't have to look over your shoulder. That, that day, that point is much sooner than you than you realize. With the Knight of Pentacles here, you deserve everything that you've worked hard for. You've worked hard for other people. You've worked hard for in, in relationships. You've really been a, um, a strong person for other people. So I just want you to see that, you know, <laughs> uh, with your heart's desire, your heart is telling you to 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 banish the dark thoughts, to banish these dark memories and embrace the joy that is that is blossoming in your life now. 
be happy, be thrilled for the success that is starting to show up as a result of this hard work you've been doing. Okay, I also want to point out that with this swan, it's so cool because it does remind me of the ugly duckling, uh, the story of the ugly duckling. If you don't know the story, it's uh, it's about an ugly duckling that just doesn't fit in. It looks different. It's awkward, and you know it doesn't fit in with the other ducks. And it isn't until it is um, older that it realizes. Until it matures, it it grows. It just grows. The the ugly duckling. <laughs> Uh, grows up and realize all this time, oh, I wasn't a duckling, I was a swan, you know? And so that's why they didn't fit in. They were a swan. So you are the swan. You are the swan. You deserve to be around others who appreciate your swan qualities. Um, you deserve to be around people and in situations where you have fun, where you have joy. You have lightness and brightness, okay? So that's that's what I want to tell you from this message. It's such a great message, and I do wish you the best. I think that, um, yes, I think that, I don't know, I just, I just want to say, wow. Congratulations to you for, for overcoming what it is you had to overcome. Um, I'm, in, I'm inspired by, by what this is showing. So... I'm sure you are an inspiration to others as well. Take care, pile number three. Um, if this resonated, please hit the like and subscribe button. Um, I, I wish you the best as you continue with your goals, to continue towards your goals here. I wish you the very best, okay? Um, take care. Thank you.